Should you buy a car in Singapore? One of the very common questions that we get asked by a number of Australian expats moving to Singapore, whether from Australia or from elsewhere around the world. You may have heard that the cost of buying a car and owning a car in Singapore is ridiculously expensive and you would be 100% correct. But in this video, we're going to unpack exactly why, some of the detail around owning a car in Singapore and buying one, and when you may want to or when you may not want to consider owning a car yourself. So let's get started. Hi, I'm Jared Brown, Australian expat financial planner based here in Singapore. Thank you very much for tuning into the video today. We are talking about car ownership and whether you should or shouldn't consider buying a car here. So first and foremost, let's have a look at COE. Now, what is the COE? What are the details? COE stands for the Certificate of Entitlement. It was brought into place by the Singapore government to control the supply of cars on the roads. We've got the population, give or take, of Sydney on a much, much smaller area. In fact, smaller than the local government area of a number of Australian states and territories. Now, this has been effective, although at some points there is still peak hour traffic, there are still traffic jams here in Singapore, but that is what it is designed to do. A COE is tagged to one vehicle and will typically last 10 years from the date of registration of that vehicle. What do some of the other specifics around COE and car ownership actually mean? Let's have a look. Now the current price of the COE for category A, which is cars, vehicles uh, below 1600cc, so smaller vehicles and electric vehicles, the price is around $86,000. For category B, which is basically the rest of the cars and vehicles, that is about 105,000. Now category E, which tends to be more your luxury vehicles, it's basically the spillover from category B registrations, that sits at $107,000. So for the majority of Australian expats looking to own a car in Singapore, the cost of the COE is about $100,000. It has fluctuated a bit over the last decade, but that is around where the price currently sits. It's based on a bidding system that takes place each year. Typically, a number of bids will be submitted for each category. Singapore, or the LTA, will take a, uh, a select number of the top bidders and take the lowest number, typically, of those bidders, and that is how the COE price is set. We have category A through to category E. Starts with smaller cars, category B being more your medium-sized cars tends to be more limited to your luxury brands. Category C and D, which are motorcycles and commercial vehicles. And then category E, which I, as I mentioned, is the spillover that we have. Now, what happens at the end of the 10 years when your COE actually runs out is you can apply to pay what is called the PQP. Naturally, there are acronyms for absolutely everything in Singapore, and it can be awfully confusing. But the PQP is essentially just an extension of your COE, which can be agreed to based on a five or a 10 year term based on the current COE rates. Now, does it make sense to extend yours or to look at another car? It is always going to be on a case by case basis and you certainly need to do your homework there. Now, it is not just the COE when it comes to buying a car that we need to look at in Singapore. We have stamp duty, we have road fees, we have registration fees. There's even an additional registration fee at the moment. All of these things can add up very quickly and we haven't even started talking about tolls or the cost of petrol. Now, one positive when it comes to car ownership in Singapore is the island is tiny, so very rarely are you actually going to be driving that far in Singapore. So your cost of petrol could in fact be a bit lower but that will certainly be taken up by the other costs of buying a car here. So this brings us to the question of, well, should I actually buy a car in Singapore and when would it make sense to do so? And of course, are there cheaper options when it comes to buying a car here? Let's have a look. So 
So should you buy a car in Singapore? Look, in most cases, the answer is no, absolutely not. The costs are ridiculous and Singapore's public transport is absolutely exceptional and the cost of ride sharing and taxis, while yes, has certainly gone up over the last 10 years, is still a far cry from the prices that we pay in Sydney or right across the country in Australia. If we catch a cab typically anywhere in Singapore, we'll be looking at anywhere from 15 to 25 dollars, barring any coupons or discounts we might have access to. That same trip in Australia is going to be usually 60 to 80 dollars. So we're still sitting a long way off the ridiculous prices we see back home. Now, if you do have kids who you are forever ferrying to sports, to different activities that they're involved in, that may of course be a very different story and it may make sense to actually buy a car here. Now, some options when it comes to buying cars. Yes, you can buy a second hand, but given the way that the COE system works, you're not usually going to get much of a discount. It may just mean that there is less time left on the COE and therefore the depreciation of the vehicle or the total package costs has, have already actually been reduced. Now, to give you an idea, a Suzuki Swift as of December in 2022 was $129,900. How much is that car back home in Australia? I'll let you Google that one. Naturally a far cry from the 130,000 we're seeing here. Now your other option that you have is what is called a higher purchase agreement, uh, which is effectively borrowing to buy the car or a lease agreement that allows you to pay a monthly cost uh, with potentially a balloon payment at the end. Now this will usually require a 60 to 70% loan. If the car is worth more than $20,000, you're typically going to have to contribute 40% of the vehicle cost. So this is still a very large outlay. You do certainly need to do your homework and this also includes looking at where you're going to live, where you're going to be actually moving to most of the time, and what public transport options you actually have access to. So do your homework, consider all of the numbers and have a look at your options when it comes to vehicle ownership in Singapore. If you have any questions at all or would like some assistance in running the numbers, drop me a note or reach out to me directly. Thank you for tuning into the video. Please do remember to like, subscribe to the channel. I look forward to seeing you next time.